Hi, I'm Representative Val Baldassau, and we're back again on Who's Looking Out for You with my great host, good friend, uh, Representative Gene North. It's always an uh, honor to see you, and gee, what a great day yesterday with that bill that we went up for the signing on the, uh, oh, the co sponsor right. Well, I didn't go. Um, I had some, another appointment. But. You co-sponsored, right, on that bill? I don't remember. It was the kindergarten, yeah, the play kindergarten, kindergarten. Yeah, the kindergarten, play-based kindergarten. Have. I mean, what a great bill, and I thought it was ideal because as a father of seven kids, when they're in kindergarten, they don't, they don't sit at the table Especially all the day boys. Long. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Getting the boy to sit still, and you're asking a five-year-old to sit energy. still. They have so much energy. Yeah, they need yeah, to play. It's, it's out of they control. Know. They really need to But anyways, play. you want to introduce, we got a great guest here, fellow state representative. Yes, uh, and, and this somebody? show is, is aptly named, Who's Looking Out for You, uh, cause, because Representative Michael Vose fits the bill. Fits Welcome, the... Representative Vose. Welcome to uh, Thank you. Thank uh, you. Mike, great to see uh, you uh, again, Al. Mm -hmm. Long reach. Yeah. Over here. And Janine, mm -hmm. it's always great to see you. Thank you. Serving together as we do on the Science, Technology, and Energy Committee, we work together a lot. Yes. And well, uh, I was now that the session's over, I haven't seen mm -hmm. you in a while. It's great to see you. I again. was fortunate to be a guest in that committee many times. Uh, you were. And we got to think yeah. of you as part of the That's committee. Right. We were there so yeah. often. Right. I should be invited to the going away or the end of the season body there for that committee. Well, oh, you, yeah. you, you should have, because we I went should. to an Italian restaurant. Oh, you already had it? It was oh. very good. <laughs> All right, so much for that invite, you know. <laughs> but anyway, Sorry about that. How many terms have you been up there? So this is my second term. Okay. And I'm re running for re-election th for my third term. And um, my first four years have been extremely positive. Uh, I've worked very hard and learned a huge amount about New Hampshire's energy economy and about New England's energy economy. And I've made myself uh, the majority policy leader on the Science, Technology, and Energy Committee um, because I cared about it, I'm interested in it, I have the aptitude for it. Um, my, my background is in technology. Uh, when I was in the Air mm -hmm. Force as a young man, well, I, thank you uh, for your service. I had a, um, and I won't hold that against you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. mm -hmm. I had a, 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 a technology job. I was a uh, weather observer, and I used sophisticated equipment to measure cloud heights and other meteorological conditions. I reported those to pilots. After that, I got out of school and got a BA in history uh, and worked at a few odd jobs before finding a uh, my niche in the technology industry, the computer software right. industry, where I worked for 40 years, wow. learning and understanding complex computer technology and explaining it to other people. And um, so that was my background for coming onto the Science, Technology, and Energy Committee and quickly adapting to and, and learning um, about the energy economy. And, you know, he really was the, the unofficial leader. Oh, without a party. doubt. I've seen you. You come yeah. up with many amendments. I mean, oh, pretty, yes. Anytime. There yeah, very <laughs> technical <laughs> amendments. You can always here. count on, on Mike. Our yeah. Representative Bowes, no matter what it is, he always happened to have an amendment mm -hmm. sitting on the desk for whatever the problem was at any given bill. I mean, <laughs> even though I was a guest, there was a couple of areas I disagreed with on the subsidies and some other stuff. Right. You know, in oh, the committee too. there. But let me ask you, did you ever serve with uh, Colonel uh, Robert Intron? I did, um, my first term. Oh, no, I mean, I'm chairman. saying in the military, because, oh, you know, he was the no. weatherman, too. No. No, I only he, served for four okay, years. Okay, because he's one of our, used to be one of our great fellow uh, right. legislators well, there. I'm oh, running I know. for my fifth term, so my first two terms were, were on a committee with Al, and the second two were on a committee with you, and mm -hmm. I don't know how I got put on science, tech, and energy. So the first two years, I was just kind of sat there trying to <laughs> absorb what you all were right. saying. You don't use words, and I'm writing down things I'm like, what? What did he say? And I had my little cheat sheet, and then one mm. day they someone said PUC. I'm like, oh, I know that one, yeah. Public Utilities Commission. Right. So it, after three years, then I finally started getting comfortable on the committee. So and the fourth year, I actually contributed mm. and yep. fought Her against you on the House floor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you yeah. contributed one quite time. a bit. The fourth did you win? Thank you. Um, well, actually, I just found out today I, I am, and I did win because I fought against you on the House floor, and then we had lunch together that mm -hmm. same day. So, right. you know, we disagreed, but we're still friends and, and colleagues. Uh, but the governor ended up vetoing the bill that you were for and I was against. <laughs> Correct. Wow. The other reason I was for that bill is because I wanted to make sure that a couple of key amendments made it into the bill. I was pretty sure it was going to pass even if I opposed it. So I wanted to make sure that 
it was amended in such a way as to do the least amount of damage. So that's why I supported the bill uh, that was eventually passed. You know what, uh, Mike, for people that are watching this here uh, show, can you explain like some of the amendments or some of the bills that you were involved in? Because you were the key player yes. on that committee. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, give us some input on, and I know myself, but I'm saying for the viewers, so they understand what you did and how you, with the technology, came together on those different amendments you worked all night long on and four or five page amendments and other stuff there. Yeah, some of them were, were very involved in complicated amendments. You're right, Al. Over my four years in the House, I've sponsored or co-sponsored 44 bills, roughly 11 bills per year. Didn't work out mm -hmm. exactly 11, but... Um, and then I've directly sponsored about a dozen bills in those four years. Um, the most important bills that I've sponsored were bills that tore down regulatory barriers mm -hmm. and provided more le oversight for the legislature of uh, the Public Utilities Commission, HB 317, the System Benefits Charge Bill that we oh. uh, just recently passed. That's uh, on, the, on the list of our accomplishments. Yes, yes. that was one of our mm -hmm. accomplishments and this year. And you were the sponsor. That was the bill I worked hardest on. Oh, I actually okay. proposed that bill last year but ran into a couple of roadblocks getting it passed, so we retained it. And um, last fall, we figured out how to fix it so that we could get it through. And then this year, we, we worked hard uh, to get it through the House and the Senate and succeeded on both fronts. And uh, the governor will be signing it very soon now. And do you know if there's going to be some kind of signing ceremony like they had with the play-based kindergarten? I'm hoping so. Well, have um, you brought, up, brought that up to the governor or the secretary that you wanted to have a ceremony? I have made a suggestion to mm -hmm. the governor's office about a place and a way to do that. And I haven't heard back from them yet whether they want to try to pursue that or not. But um, he'll be signing four bills, um, HB 1515, HB 1550. What are the subjects so people know? Because they might Yeah, we don't know the numbers. I, yeah, <laughs> sure, I, I sure. was either co-sponsored or sponsored about 30-something bills, yeah, okay? And I, because they all say, Al, can you help me with this? Can you help me with that? And it's not just veterans, elderly, for, you know, um, pro-life, all right, these other right. issues there. Uh, but if you can explain, what, what are those bills that you, the numbers? Yeah, thanks for pointing that out. That's, that's a good point, Al. HB 1515 removed some regulatory barriers that will allow innovative companies to, um, particularly one in my own district called RE Energy, to use the clean wood from construction and demolition debris to create renewable fuels, bio oils. Um, existing state law had barriers to prevent that from happening. So this bill removed those barriers. Um, it doesn't expose the environment to any harm because it'll still be under the, um, the supervision of the um, Department of Environmental Services. You know, we went on a field trip to re-energy. We did. We got to see um, mm -hmm. how, they, how they worked. We had to wear the safety glasses and the helmet, and we saw the people working there and sorting everything out. And uh, the Democrats in our committee were against this bill. And, uh, but they didn't have a problem with them taking all the, that construction uh, leftovers and trucking it all the way to Canada where they would sell it <laughs> instead of using it here. So there's emissions into the air, which is there we're mm -hmm. very worried about. Right. And mm -hmm. uh, I don't know, how do you explain that? <laughs> well, we got the message across that um, using this material at home in a environmentally safe and sensitive way uh, is also good business for New Hampshire. And um, the House and the Senate agreed, and the governor uh, will sign uh, that bill um, probably in the next week or two. They were against the idling bill. You remember the right, idling I remember bill? The, I, could, I, I know I, that was when I fought on the House floor. Yeah, yes. I couldn't believe that one there because I have, in my, cut, my um, Escalade, I press a button and it wands my car up in the winter. But you could do it. Uh, they saw, you know you couldn't do it on private property unless you had a remote starter. Yep. That right. made no sense. That made no sense. The <laughs> remote starter is okay, but if you yeah. don't, no, it's against right. the law and we'll so, arrest you. So now people here, once the bill's signed, can go out and start their car up in the winter, so it can thaw out, so you can drive safely, 
you know, to work without freezing and shaking, you know, for about 10, 15 minutes until the car warms up. Now, the PU, I mean, what I noticed here, your committee always tries to focus on cutting uh, the regulations and making it less uh, expensive for utilities, electricity. Right. Can you bring up like some of the bills? Because I know you played a big part on trying to drop rates here in the state. Mm -hmm. Well, <clears throat> the only way I, I served last fall on the SB 125 committee, which was a committee that was formed to try to figure out. Again, that's that's one of our um, what, what is major this? accomplishments. accomplishments yeah. Yeah, Correct. Established a committee mm -hmm. to research and propose solutions to lower energy costs. Exactly. So the first uh, job of that committee was to figure out, well, what causes high electricity prices? And after listening to lots of testimony and reading lots of material submitted by uh, utilities, regulators, um, interest groups, et cetera, uh, it became pretty clear that because New England is a regional energy market, that New Hampshire's prices are pretty much out of our control. The price of electricity is controlled regionally, not here in, in the state. Mm -hmm. But the one thing that we do control here in the state is the uh, subsidies that we provide for renewable energy uh, and for environmental concerns. Mm -hmm to deal with climate change, et cetera. Uh, those, are the, those are the kinds of things that raise electricity prices in New Hampshire that we do have some control right. over. So a lot of what we've been trying to do in the four years that I've been on the STE committee is to try to lower those subsidies uh, whenever possible to try to bring down the cost of electricity and to resist people trying to raise those subsidies, such as um, the bill that the governor just vetoed, SB 365, which would have increased subsidies to help the biomass industry up north. Um, I was supportive uh, when I first got into the house of trying to help the forest products industry by keeping the biomass plants alive. But when they come back year after, after year, year after year more. and right. ask for more, yeah. at some point you have to say, well, wait a minute, you know, what's wrong mm -hmm. with this model? What's wrong and with this business plan? One of those plants is foreign owned and the man who was testifying who runs the place doesn't know who owns it. And I'm like, shouldn't he know that? Right, yeah. I don't, yeah. Why, I mean, it came yeah. as a surprise. I was surprised at that too, why, why that was a secret. And they, they were telling us that we, you know, we have to pass this bill and give them more subsidies or the whole economy is going to collapse Yeah, up there. 100 people are going to lose their jobs and it's well, over. They, well, they, try, they tried to say mm -hmm. it's more than that because then you got the people that truck the product to another area and then you got to, they sell the leftovers to someone else and it would be mm -hmm. a domino effect. I'm like, but you know, no, no one else in the private sector has all these subsidies. Their, their right. business either thrives or mm -hmm. it doesn't. But we're not supposed to be a socialist economy, and all these subsidies I, really I, is socialist. I agree. That's why in there I said I reserve the right, to, you know, to vote against that stuff. There, I just couldn't support the the mm -hmm. subsidies there. But, but you know, you, I mean, I was very impressed sitting in that committee there, and of course I'm on my sixth term running for my seventh. So I've been around the block. Uh, yeah, you know, I've been the chair yeah, yeah. You know, when Janine uh, first came up there, and so uh, we've been around there for a while there. And it's very impressive to see somebody that puts their heart and soul into what you did and oh, working and long does. hours he on does. those amendments was very impressive. And those amendments don't just happen. Uh, a lot of work uh, right. behind the scenes goes into creating those amendments. A lot of discussions with other people. Um, digging out facts and information mm -hmm. to support uh, what you're trying to do. You know, the, the biomass plants up north do support a fair number of jobs. There's no question about that. And it's a shame if those jobs end up going away. But Agreed. by providing subsidies for those jobs, how many jobs are we losing elsewhere That's right. because we drive up the cost of electricity? I keep asking that mm -hmm. question, mm -hmm. and nobody seems to be able to come up right. with an answer. Yeah. Um, but I think groups like the Business and Industry Association, um, they're very concerned about this. 
they were opposed to HSB 365. They asked the governor to veto it mm -hmm. because they w don't want to see companies in New Hampshire refuse to enlarge or new companies to move to New Hampshire because our electric rates are too right. high. Right. And these kind of subsidies contribute to that. And while they may save a few jobs in the North Country, if they drive away or prevent the creation of a lot of jobs elsewhere in the economy, is that a net win or a net loss? I think mm -hmm. it's a net loss. I, I agree with you there, definitely, because I know that's all I keep hearing here in London, or here in our businesses, electricity costs are too high. Yeah. And we have a big industrial base here. We Three quarters of that airport is in Londonderry. So, and we have a lot of building going on with the Woodmont Pro, you know, project and all that. So, we, yeah, we got to get a handle on this. You know, there was something you brought up, and maybe one of you can hear. You said that we're regional. How do we take control where we, you know, the cost where we can be different than, because Massachusetts costs are higher than us. Is that true? Or well, actually, I, I, I don't have service here, but I have an app called ISO to go. So you can look it up. Um, I see ISO to go. Mm -hmm. It's got a little light bulb if you want to get the app. And it, uh, well, it says LTE. I have one bar. Oh, it loaded. Okay, so this, I don't know if, if the camera can zoom in on this. So um, wh what does that do? That tells you the that cost? That tells you what the cost is right this mm -hmm. second. Yeah. So if, you, if I look back in an hour, it could be different. Mm -hmm. But right now, um, it's 22.58, and well, we're not the highest, but we're certainly not the lowest. <laughs> well, Massachusetts uh, electricity costs do tend to be higher because they provide even more subsidies than we do. Mm -hmm. Um, Vermont's electricity down. costs are one of the cheapest in New England because they buy a lot of their electricity from Canada, hydroelectricity. Um, they have long-term purchase power mm -hmm. agreements with uh, Hydro-Quebec to buy uh, hydroelectricity from Canada and that helps keep their mm -hmm. costs lower. Um, Maine has a lot of natural hydroelectricity uh, in the state, mm. and that helps keep their yeah. costs lower. I've always heard we we have an overabundance of electricity in New Hampshire. Well, we you do know. produce more than we use. Right. Uh, at any given moment in time, New Hampshire uses about 1,750 to 2,000 megawatts of electricity. While Seabrook produces 1,200 megawatts, Granite Ridge Energy produces 700. That's 1,900 right there. Mm -hmm. The um, hydroelectric Dams in New Hampshire produce about 100 megawatts. So then why is the cost high then if we have all of this abundance? Because all of that electricity doesn't stay in New Hampshire. It gets sold mm -hmm. on the, the regional grid. Um, so our utilities actually buy it from the regional grid. And it's, so it's pooled, basically. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and um, every state buys from ISO New England, ISO mm -hmm. New England sets the price, and then they add to that whatever subsidies and, and other charges that, right. that they want to add right. for their own we, uh, public to policy purposes. We got to go on a field trip to I ISO mm -hmm. New England as well, and it was like NORAD. Do you remember War Games, a movie oh, in, yeah. in the 80s? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's what it reminded me of, and we're looking down at these people, little workers working at their desks, a high-stress job. Oh, and all the yeah, computer technology. Yeah. Yeah. And then yeah, the I control room mm -hmm. at ISO New England has this great big huge board that I'd say is 30 feet long and 15 feet high that shows the entire New England power mm -hmm. grid. Every major power transmission line in New England and Can every generator from there? is there. With, like last night uh, in Derry, my daughter's power went out. Are they able to identify that the power is out in that area with those boards, or are they? I think the ISO New England board only shows the transmission lines. Oh, okay. But if you go to the, the Eversource office in Manchester, they have a similar board there that just shows New Hampshire, mm -hmm. or their service territory in New Hampshire. And that board, I'm sure, would show the, the outage that happened, uh, outages that happened mm -hmm. yesterday in various oh, okay. parts of the right show is there. flying by. We have eight yeah. minutes left, and now yeah, we wanted to still talk about um, good information. Five seventeen and, and fifteen fifty. And what are those subjects there? Because you know me. I'm uh, well, this was part of our accomplishments. Um, no, I'm saying, what is the subject on the bill? 
Repeal I feel the electricity consumption tax to reduce okay. electricity mm -hmm. costs. Uh, or did we just talk about that yeah. one? We just did. And then require electric bills to include the cost of compliance with renewa renewable energy standards. I remember us fighting for this because mm -hmm. <laughs> we were up against, uh, they, they didn't want this there, our office. Well, we feel that, that every customer, electric customer in New Hampshire, ought to know what they're paying mm -hmm. for. And so we um, supported this bill, which was actually sponsored by Representative Michael Harrington, to require... Who, who was a uh, public utilities commissioner. He was, mm -hmm. yep. And his bill would require the utilities to put on their bill exactly what each customer is paying mm -hmm. uh, for to support the renewable portfolio standard. And it'll appear on your bill once a year in December, and it will allow you to figure out, oh, gee, I spent $55 this year to support wow. renewable energy. Some people will be happy with that. Others may be not so happy right. that they and spent that much. There was one day it came up. Now, I, I put solar on my house. Mm -hmm. My bill used to be about 350 bucks a month, if not more. Okay, and I have central air and, you know, it's three floors. Uh, but anyways, I save my family a couple hundred bucks a month now by having solar. I lease it. Okay, so That's in the net metering is a no-brainer for, for my family. And I think more and more should be doing this here because it actually, we're helping the grid. You know, on days I'm not using that much. Well, it's going back One of in. our colleagues would disagree. Oh, we have a lot of, we had a lot of good Republicans on our committee. We were very fortunate mm -hmm. to be a committee with, with all good, including Doug Thomas, who lives right. here in yep. London Dairy. Doug's and, a great guy. Uh, yeah. And when, when these guys walk in, they're like, those are the smart guys in the house. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, but you know what I'm saying? So I'm looking at somebody that was paying all this money in electricity, now I'm saving my family money, and everyone was pushing solar, 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 you know, other types of energy usage, but now we get it, then they want to take it away. You know, it's just I like know, the in, small in cars. In they raise your property tax. If you, yeah. if you uh, See, get they solar, they, they, yeah, they raise we, your taxes, they don't so do that you here. get no savings. But I mean, it makes no sense here because we're saving. We're using less power off the grid. Well, for individual homeowners, I think solar makes great sense. Right. Um, Individual businesses, I know a couple of businesses, in fact, RE Energy in Epping put up a four-acre solar we're gonna array. Do, we're doing that here in London. 0.83 megawatts, mm -hmm. uh, almost a megawatt. Um, and they power their, their whole business mm -hmm. with that, with the energy they get from that solar array. And that's perfect for them because they only operate the business during the day right. when the sun is shining. Mm -hmm. And so... At night, when the solar panels are not generating any electricity, it doesn't well, matter. They're, they're not, not at using the, at much the airport, anyway. The Manchester Airport, they, you know, they, they have all those solar panels on the parking, on top of the parking structure. Mm -hmm. They told us uh, that, that does, they get a little bit. If the moon's, moon's out, it does generate a little bit, which Actually, is surprising. Actually, the, the solar array on top of the parking garage, which takes up the whole parking, oh. mm -hmm. the, the whole roof, uh, it's almost two acres. It, pay, it, it generates enough electricity to power one-third of the parking garage. Not of the airport, right. just the parking garage. But they must have some heavy-duty battery systems there, too, right, that retains that? Or, or do they? And the batteries are I very, very expensive, yeah, and there are I too mean, many out I there. couldn't afford the batteries for my house. So I, don't like 5, think, I don't think they have any batteries there. I think you know, they just... They just um, they get just the power. And, and okay. remember when they put them up? They put them up facing the wrong direction so that they were blinding the mm -hmm. the eyes in the tower. And they they knew that when they were putting them up, but they finished the project before they took it down and redid it. At wow. a cost of two million dollars. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. Wow. So it's it's expensive mm -hmm. electricity. Yeah. Um, you know, solar is there's a myth out there that solar is the answer to all our problems. It's not a one-for-one one replacement no, not at all. for baseload generated electricity, mm -hmm. which right now is mostly either nuclear or fossil fuel based. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is simple. The sun only shines adequately about six hours a day. And in and New England? <laughs> and unless you can you know, find a way to store the energy that, energy that can get generated during that six hours, and your solar panels are sitting there doing nothing right. for 18 hours a day. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's why they'll never replace uh, baseload generated power, right. either from 
fossil fuels or from nuclear power. Uh, and I read an article just the other day, innovation you know, continues to happen all the time. Mm -hmm. I read an article just the other day that said there's a company down in Texas that has uh, built a 25 megawatt prototype plant that burns natural gas and emits no carbon emissions. Wow. They capture the carbon emissions and reburn them as part of the generation mm -hmm. process. And the 25 megawatt plant ran so successfully they're now building a 200 megawatt plant. And the technology uh, that they've developed, if it becomes widespread, we can generate electricity using natural gas for the foreseeable future without adding to carbon emissions whatsoever. You know, while we're sitting here, I can see what my house is generating. I wonder what you were looking at on you your know phone. I, mean, I just wanted to show you here. <laughs> You know what I mean? That's your solar That's panels. my solar panels on my house. Yeah, my husband has city. one of those on his phone. So I can see that I, in certain days, I'm generating more than I'm using. Right. You know, and it's a no-brainer for somebody that's on a budget, like, you know, many families are, you know, to, to do that there. And so that's why I'm hoping, it's like the gas car, okay? People, you know, push them to buy smaller cars, and then now we want to find a way to tax them and make them spend more money to get, you know, rev to get more revenue out of them. Well, they're not because paying for they're the not, roads. Yeah, they're not paying they're not for the roads. They're not helping us pay for the roads. But and that's a big we're, problem. Right. And we're almost out of time, but Mike, I, I just wanted to tell you, I'm so glad that you're running again because I don't know how the Science, Tech, and Energy Committee could go on without you. <laughs> oh, thank you. That's very and sweet of you yeah, to say Yeah, you know, that. another thing, I, 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 it was an honor for me working with you going in and out of that committee. Hopefully I'll be the speaker there and maybe we can do things with you there <laughs> yeah, for I was sure. Yeah, for speaker. But anyways, um, you know, tell, how do people, if they want to help, or they, they want to know more about you, do you have a website? Do you have... I do so have a website. Let them know. Uh, actually, it's nhrepvos.com. Okay. I probably should have brought a sign with that on it. Well, that's uh, fine. What we're going to do is you, when we're done, you'll let them know. They'll put it up on the screen. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, and the phone number, anything you want out to, they can, people call you if you Everything want is on the website. Everything's on the website. Yeah. I like your signs with the red yeah, and the Yeah, that is. It's Hampshire. like mine, the red and white. They stand out there, but I use they the corrugated ones. Yeah. yeah, mine are green and mm -hmm. blue and we're out of time. Well, I'll tell you, it's <laughs> always great to get, you know, the brains of the, you know, the real brains, I should say, of that committee in here because Mike does make a big difference. I know. It was and, just uh, me and all those guys. I was the only yeah. Republican woman on our committee, so in our caucus, mm -hmm. it was... Well, thanks yeah. to both of you for but inviting yeah, no, me. It definitely was really been, uh, uh, a lot you know, of fun, yeah. and I can't believe how quickly the time went by. Oh, yeah, it, it does go by fast here. Yeah, we have a great crew here. Freedom of speech is a beautiful thing it here is. in London, Derry, and Mer I've been to her in Merrimack, and it's been great, and, you know, using the cable studios there. Mm -hmm. So what do you think? Get reelected. Once Thank again, you. who's looking out for you? We'll be back. <laughs>